All right, your website. What information's on there? Do you have warnings? Do you explain what can happen? Is it clear to everybody? Do you have it for the unsighted person? How complete is the description of activities? Are there any warnings? Do you have a copy of your waiver on there for them to review it? Are the pictures on your website yours or are they copyrighted? Did you get a, steal them off the internet? Get sued for that now. I got sued for it. <laughs> do you have the players sign a release for the use of their pictures? Is it on your waiver? Smart thing to do. Add it into your waiver, folks. No shooting signs. Are they in your staging areas or just on your field? Is the approach to the f location through any playing fields? Do they drive by a live field? Do you have the correct signage? Do you tell them what's going on? What do you mean tell them what's going on? Sorry. Do you have the correct signage to tell them what to do when they walk on the field? Goggles on. As they're walking off, does it say goggles on still? Does it say barrel blockers on? Do you know what the ASTM says you're supposed to have as far as signage? Are you a member of the ASTM? Best $75 you ever pay. All right, what is the layout of the field? Do they shoot towards the staging area or parking area? Or are they shooting laterally? Is the parking area, staging area marked with signs? What they can do and not do? Something as stupid as a speed limit sign, folks. Because how many people think that they're Mario Andretti or some off-road racer? Inflatable bunkers, are the stakes below the surface level? Or do you forget to check them? Low branches removed. Bunkers made with nails or screws, big difference. The nails will back out with heat and cold. Are bunkers reviewed prior to each day of play for nails to be flush? Make sure there's no sharp edges. Are the stakes checked several times each day by your refs? Do you release the air in your bunkers? Middle of the day, so that the soup air bunkers don't bounce the balls over your net. Because they get hard with the heat, like tom-toms. That ball hits that thing and goes, bang! It'll go another 150 yards. All you gotta do is let the air out. Most people don't even think about it. All right, we'll have more questions later. I'll just get you guys thinking about different things that you're gonna be exposed to as a field owner. Number one, layout is important. The parking area location where you actually have the parking versus your playing area, your staging area, your chrono area, your playing field area. The entrance to the playing field, you wanna control that. The direction of play is important. And if you don't do all of those things together, you end up with potential for claims. This is not a good field layout where you're shooting up and down towards registration and parking. Why? The balls will go over the net. If you play paintball at all, you know that the balls will go over the net during normal play, so don't set it up so they can potentially shoot in that area. Here's a, a better field layout, shooting crosswise, but you got registration and parking right there. You have no chronograph area. They can't control what's going on. The guy with the registration right here can't watch what's going on in the field. So if your registration is in the center, you have a little bit more control. Here, the registration's in the center. You got your staging and parking a little bit off the net, not right up on it. The chrono's in, the, in front of the registration area so you can actually see what's going on. I know nobody ever walks away from a chrono with their goggles off or walks into a chrono station with no goggles or a barrel blocking device not on when they walk out. I know we've never seen that happen. Danger areas are going to be cross areas, corner to corner. Why? Because most paintball players that play in the back corners here are fat old guys like me that can't run up to the front bunkers. And they usually have poor eyesight. So instead of aiming like this, they're aiming up like this, trying to see if they can hit all the way into the back bunker. And it clears the net, the parking lot, and the freeway is on the other side because they can't tell where they're landing. So where you position everything is really important. Would you stand behind your netting? Have you tested it? How long ago? Every three months you ought to test your net. The netting that has been coming in the last five years from China does not last 12 months if you're in a high heat or high, uh, cold area. Does your netting have holes in it? 
Do you zip tie them shut? If your netting has holes in it, probably because it's a failed net. How high is your netting? Speedball should have a minimum 20 foot high. Woods ball, if you have an arbor of branches and leaves up above, 12 foot. Do you have a Z entrance into your fields in your chrono area where they have to walk back two different directions? You guys are taking notes. Hold on. Take notes on some important stuff. This will be available for you guys on the website. So you guys don't have to write down every single one. Sorry. He's typing like crazy over there. I, I, I thought you were sending a note to somebody. He's like, All right, right on. Uh, this will be available for all you guys. Um, the Z entrance, real important, so that they have a chance to make two cuts before they come in onto the field, so people aren't looking to see what's going on in the field without goggles. What is the setback used from your netting? Do you let people stand up against the net? For some reason, people are stupid enough to walk right up to the net and put their face right on it like that. We've had a couple of people lose their eyes, eyesight because of that. Netting should be tested every month, ASTM test. 315 feet per second, 15 feet back, 10 shots in a four inch circle. No particles over three millimeters should go through. How do you test that if you don't have the rack to do it for ASTM? On a windy day when your net's billowing and it's taut, walk back, measure it, chrono your gun at least 300, try to get up to 315 and fire 10 shots. If anything burns through, you know you got a netting issue. If it's taut with the wind, it's usually going to give you the same tension that you're going to have. That'll be the worst case scenario. Is there a specific amount of times, like per feet, that you have to test? No. Usually your netting is going to have the same exposure to the sun and shade and cold, ice, snow yeah. um, throughout the whole park. So if you test, if you have three fields and you test three fields, one or two spots, then you're fine. Okay. I'll document the date and time of the test with a video. Hearsay doesn't work in a defense. Yeah, I tested it March 12th or 13th, I'm not sure. Everybody has a damn camera that takes video. Use your camera. This is not an acceptable entrance. This is one of the fields I've insured for years. I showed up over there and I went, what the hell is that? The problem with this is, the people standing right here has a direct line from this guy shooting this way. And they were there without a mask. Those are correct entrances. You can see that they have to go in, come around, and go back. So in this particular one, they go in, come around, and go back into the field this way. Same with this. You see the people that are standing right there, they have their masks off. So somebody shooting back in this lane coming across, they're not going to hit these people. Here's a doorway to a field. The better way on this one would have it open the opposite direction. So it opens out the backside instead of inside. Because now the, everybody on the outside of that doorway would get shot if the game was going on while somebody walked off the field. There's a good Z entrance. Got to go in, turn right, make a left, go out. And you're into the playing area. So on this one here, you walk in, go this way. Got to go around that Jeep to get back into the field. There's the other example standing inside the field. He has that chain link fence so people don't go uh, make that sharp turn cut across. So they squeeze between the chain link fence and the pole. <laughs> they did it while we were standing there taking the pictures. I was like, you're kidding me. You guys are 18 years old. You can't walk around 10 feet of fence. This is not a good example of entrances into a chrono area. They just cut holes into the net. Why? Because people turn around off of the chrono table without a barrel blocking device with the gun still alive. Most people don't know how to use the safety and hardly ever will you find somebody turn off the electronic gun. Here he has tie backs not marked for the people to walk through. You can see through the path marks there that they walk on both sides of those. They're walking on the inside of that which would hit that wire and injure somebody. There was a claim on that. Here they have the stakes with the tie downs and they put a fence around it so they can't walk right into the cables. The netting billowing on your field. If you don't have the cross wires on there, your netting's gonna billow and you're gonna rip out your grommets. So I always put X's on both sides of the net. That way it doesn't matter which side the wind blows. 
This one's got the X bracing on it. You can see it on both sides. So you have an X here, you have an X coming down on both sides of the net, crisscrossing. So it doesn't matter which side that the net, the wind blew, it would keep it from ripping out the nets and damaging the net. Your, our net lasts eight years to 10 years if it's installed correctly. If you install it wrong and you go cheap on, your, on the distance on your poles, you try to go over 25 feet, or if you try to not have the bracing, or if you don't install it correctly, you're gonna end up replacing your netting every couple of years. Spend the money right the first time, it'll last a lot longer. There's the, it shows where it's billowing right there and the cross wires are actually holding that back. So you can see how it's starting to come out on the outside right there, but the crisscrossing will take care of it. You're supposed to also have a, one going up on the pole too to keep it from billowing in between poles. Here we ended up having to go 40 foot net because you see the road right next to it on the right? This is that Camp Pendleton paintball park? And a general was driving by that road and a paintball hit him. All hell broke loose when the general's car got hit. So he said, I want a higher net. So they put a higher net up. Um, cost them a lot of money to do it, but the general was happy and they were able to continue operating the paintball part. You should have no open seams in your netting like what you see right here. It should not look like this. Way too long to replace your net. You're pushing your lot, you're waiting for a claim to come through. Most people have got their uh, substantial investment into their park and props, netting, getting it set, building it up for a couple years. Why have your insurance go from $5,000 to 40 or 50 or $80,000 because you didn't do things right? Um, this is a cheap Chinese net that came on in. Did the safety test while we were there and he shot right through his own net. There's some more cheap netting, China. Yeah, but it was cheaper. It was a lot cheaper. It saved about $400 a roll. Bleachers, some fields have bleachers. You might make sure that you have actual bleachers that are designed to be bleachers. Don't have the Mickey Mouse rickety ones that they fall off of. Make sure the railing's there. Make sure that you have netting high enough so that they're standing on the top bench of the bleacher that they don't get shot. Here at the top of the bleachers, I'm sitting there with a the camera taking pictures. You can see the netting has got the open weave netting still up on the top right here, but the ball will be stopped here. A shell fragment can come through there because that's the hybrid net, but it wouldn't injure the person that's standing up on top. He has his cable taunt. The corner poles are staked backwards so it doesn't droop. They don't fall in. If you don't stake them, they pull in. So that was done correctly. He just didn't mark them. Here he did the whole perimeter of his park, netted. And he has his fields inside to play. So everything inside there is live. And I think I have another picture here where he has it. Let me go back. What they did at this park is they actually netted in a trail. So the trail went in between all the parks and then they had the Z entrance to go inside. They had two or three fields in each netted area. This one had the netting up on pulleys so they can drop it down, high wind areas and when they weren't operating the park. Almost correct, except for his entrance right there. I'm standing in the uh, registration area looking and you can see right where they come on out of the field right here is their exit and they walk right here and most of them didn't have the barrel blocking devices on when I was standing there with the owner. <laughs> they normally do. I said, yeah, I understand that. Most of them do. Here's the uh, trail I was telling you about that they had, where they had the fields of play. This had um, two different or three different fields and they, they netted around and then they have the area where you can walk with your goggles off in between. So they have like a, a channel that goes through the whole park. 